Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and teach them to obey my commands. For I am with you always. Our primary goals are to evangelize nations of the earth, disciple new believers, plant churches, and continuously share the benefits of the gospel, our passion, transforming lives, have working relationships, growing teams, expanding strategies, advancing church, do you want to be a part? It's a mission that is possible. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Good night, everyone. Welcome to weekly devotional and global partners Caribbean Mission TT. We thank God for you as, as always. And we thank God for you for listening on this wonderful series of taking the journey around the walls of Jerusalem, Jerusalem gates. And oh, how much we have been blessed. And tonight we are going to look at the fountain gate. And it is one of the most amazing features in Nehemiah chapter 3 as he took us around the world going anti-clockwise and then we will he started with the sheep gate going anti-clockwise you know this if you look at the jerusalem jerusalem is in a shoe-like figure figure so you look at it's the shape the original old city of jerusalem was shaped like a shoe and i could probably show you that it's shaped like a shoe and you see Jerusalem on the top part, um, let's say the bottom part of the toe, and uh, for you on, on, on air, on the top part, we see he going on the top part. I have shown in this diagram, people are coming to the sheep gate and they are going to the left. So Nehemiah began to began describing the rebuilding of the wall, going for, instead of going clockwise, he started on the northern gate, northern side is and go around um, from the sheep gate to the fish gate and we see all the sheep came in coming and they go into the temple the fish gate we see people coming from the sea and bringing in their fish and we talk about the sea gate jesus christ that sacrificial where we accepted jesus christ and then we we see the the fish gate we tell others about it and next to the fish it, next to the fish gate, I almost straight that almost straight wall there. We have the old gate, and old gate we shared with you. It's so important, where we it speaks about going back, looking back, going back to the roots. You know, we always have to go back to the old gate. It talks about holiness, and it's began with holiness. God told Moses, uh, they look back. Take off their shoe for the gong your son is holy gong. And, and, and at the at that old gate within, as you see the old gate is next to the, the temple, it's all built in with worship, it's all built in with the call where Moses got a call and we got a call, Thy am, send me. And then we go right along. It's amazing as you see the broad wall, that broad wall there, and the broad wall, and we go right down to the valley gate. And you see the valley gate is almost at the end there, the valley gate. And when we look at the valley gate, and I would like some of you 
as you get your maps and pull down your maps from the Google, just go Google the maps and said, Nehemiah, maps of, maps of old Jerusalem in Nehemiah's day. And you'll see some of these maps, these maps, and you'll see how you go down and he goes down to the, to the, to the valley gate, but it is down in the valley, that trip to the valley. We saw um, the Ephraim gate. It was not one of the gates that were mashed up. It was an internal gate. It, it, it had no outside. It, it was only had one entrance from inside. But around the wall, we, we the valley gate was basically get so much legs to a lot of destruction there. And then we go to the two. At the two now, at the two, at the end of the two of Jerusalem, there, as you can see the two in the footprint, you can see the two. It and you see that clear white bit there, the, near the pool of shame was the dung gate. And last night, Reverend, Reverend Bernard shared on the dung gate, we got to put off. Dung gate is where we put off. And, and I, I thought that some of the things, I, I thought it worth repeating in this summary, the dung wood, the, the dung gate, where we and put away lying, refuse to give place to the devil, put away stealing, let no corrupt communication comes out of your mouth. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from among you with all malice. And we went to Galatians, Galatians 5 and Ephesians. We got Ephesians 5 and put it away at the down gate, therefore. And, 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 and you have to clean. That has to be clean. That's clean to all the down. All the down. All the, all the down are good. Paul saw to the woman to put off on righteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murders, debate, deceit, malignancy, gossiping, backbiting, hate for God, being spiteful, pride, boasting, inventing evil things, disobedience to parents, lack of understanding, covenant breaking, lack of natural affection, cruel, cruel and cold-heartedness. Paul declared that judgment, called it that God's judgment is that they who commit these things are worthy of that, especially those who not only do them, but have pleasure in them that do them. Those who have pleasure in them that do them. The don't therefore, he said, walk worthy of their call, of the calling with all loneliness and meekness. And we must no longer walk in the vanity of our minds, but we must renew it in the spiritual mind. And it's only as we get rid of all that, that bitterness and all that dung inside. It's one thing to have Jesus when you accept Jesus Christ, yes, but we have to take care and don't clean, ask for forgiveness and get rid of it. And that is a significant milestone in the life of the of the believer and then he says that we are to put on we are to put off and put on and so paul says if a man therefore purges himself from these he shall be a vessel of honor sanctified and meet for the master's use prepared for every good work flee also youthfulness by but follow righteousness faith charity, peace um, with them that call on the Lord with a pure heart. So he's saying, anytime we purge ourselves, when you do that, we shall be a vessel of honor. And that is why the location of the John gate is very important. It's a dung or soap and a dung, all the things that from the sacrifice that they're not wanting, but could go down the John gate. Dung was burnt. And it's when the dung was burnt uh, they, they use the burnt, you see how God is good? You use the burnt dung for energy. Come on here now. So for energy to light homes and to make brick to make coals. So so even when God uses the broken up pieces and the broken things in order to help and to assist. But the important thing is that we if we do let go that are, are those things in that, we will never be able to receive the next gate. So near to the dung gate. Near to the dung gate was the fountain gate. The fountain gate. And, 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 and this is significant because at the bottom of the hill of dung, and now we turn the bend 
and then we turn the bend we meet the front so we are going back up now on the eastern wall on the eastern side of the wall he's going back now he didn't come down from this from from the north and go to east he's going back up and time you hit that turn hallelujah you see jerusalem on the mountain the, the, the temple the mountain on the mountain time you start to go up the fountain gate and you turn that band hallelujah you keep your eyes you just have to you got to teach us to keep your eyes on this because that is on the home stretch god has cleansed us and he has saved us and he has cleansed us and he has asked us to consecrate our mind so god now the word now has given us reinforcements and the kind what we need in order to travel on that on the, on, to make it the home stretch in order to finish the race we got to go to the next gate the fountain gate let us pray father tonight we thank you and we ask that, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you bless your people bless all our international audience or regional audience as we visit the dawn gate The donkey, the donkey is here. And I trust that that little explanation and showing you where we are. I thought I should give you. We should take this solemn moment because cleansing is important. It takes time, but we gotta do it. I in preparing for this session tonight, and although I wrote this book. When I reached the dunk gate and, he, and I hit the fountain gate and I began to do the search on, on these gates, I recognize that you cannot live the dung inside of you. We got to get rid of all the waste, or else we get septic and we die. And that is why the word tells us to get rid of put off put off and i want to exhort you tonight to put off being a pastor is one of the most precious service to the lord and i always tell people who go into the pastor you go into the pastor god calls you you have to be called first huh? and to serve him Yes, there is the organization and your point, but you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You serve him. You are his child. You are his servant. You are his child. Respect all authorities, but you serve God. And we see that in the life of Jesus Christ. You serve God. And, and one of the things, I don't have an experience of being a paid pastor, I've been volunteering pastor for all these over certain 40 years in ministry. And I, and when I say volunteer, I mean to say, I, I compare in the world system, what they do. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, God has convinced me from early that ministry, to trust him, to walk by faith, to trust him, and to empower yourself. And the Paul model, you work with your hands to take care of your family and also don't put burden on the church and that you help the brethren. And, 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 and that is because I'm, I'm very convinced that the pastor cannot be an employee. He's a servant of God. And he has to watch over your souls. System developing the world system that you try to apply to the church, that's for another time. But they have never worked and they won't work. We are servants of God. And that, that's the joy. You do as you work as guided by the joy to build people, to add value to people, serve people, to serve the church, to stand fast, to watch over the souls of men and women, because that is what you have to give account to. Pass, teach, pass the word down. So the fountain gate, I have a particular text there for that. Let's look at what is the fountain. By definition a fountain is a natural source of flowing water from underground the valleys of the earth so so underground from the valleys of the earth is the fountain 
the fountain gate was on the eastern wall, just north of the Dong Gate. In a strategic location near the pool of Silo. Hallelujah. And near the pool of Siloam, water flowed. It was called the water of Shilom. It was not until the time of King Hezekiah that the first tunnel aqueduct, Sh Shalom's most famous work was made. The fountain gate was located closest to the Dong gate. And here in Nehemiah chapter 3, you turn to when Nehemiah reference the Dong gate, is in Nehemiah chapter 3, um, he spoke about the Dong gate in, I think it, it is in verse, not I think, it is in verse 14. So at the time of Nehemiah, and afterwards, many wash before they enter the temple area. The pool of Siloam was also a place where Jesus sent the blind man to wash. You could remember that event? He sent the blind man to wash. And we can reference that in John 7, 9. Jesus said at Whosoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, and I wanted to hold on to this verse, streams of living water, come on here now, shall flow from within him. Streams, and when you say streams of living water, shall flow from within him. And you get my book to Zillam Gates, you can have a look in the appendices and you'll get all the scriptures in the references behind the book. As you see them reference here. Streams of living water. John 7, 58. Streams of living water. Living water. Streams, living water. Shall flow. From within him. From within the Holy Spirit is symbolized here as streams of flowing water like a fountain. So the fountain gate, therefore, speaks of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Ah, streams of living water. The fountain gate, all the doors go mashed up. The fountain gate has been the most attacked gate, one of the top gates around the wall of Jerusalem. If you look at Nehemiah and you study and you start to read, and you read from Nehemiah chapter 3, as you go around the wall, and you will recognize that them guys decided to look up all the walls around the fountain, the fountain gate, they, they were damaged, and each time they go, they tackle the fountain gate. So the Holy Spirit has always been the one that all the counterfeits, all the false teachers, has tried to twist it. But God in his word was very firm in the scriptures and talk, tell us and guide us about the Holy Spirit. Teach us about the Holy Spirit and what he shall do. So men try to control the Holy Spirit. Men pick up so much things. The churches have been split about the Holy Spirit. Men say, men say, you know, you know, I, I, you see, we, I, I could remember with the people talking, but if you don't talk in speaking, you know, you're not saved. All kind of false doctrine came out of that. They apologized. People were damaged. People were hurt. And I looked at it. When I look over that, I said, but people don't study Corinthians 14. People study it. And I looked at that point and as the and I, I at each time I could remember the Holy Spirit taking control 
of you. Let me tell you something. Only God is the Holy Spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit who fills you. Man can't have no control over that. It's the Holy Spirit. You got to concentrate yourself and cleanse. You have to repent, save. You consecrate yourself. Be consecrated. And God do the energizing. You don't do the energizing. Human beings can energize themselves. That's what that we call it. The beating of the self. That don't help it. It's the Holy God, the Holy Spirit, do the work. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. It's God, God, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you men maintain the control this and that. They that that is as a matter of fact, I believe that's about blasphemy. You know, they can't tell you what God the Holy Spirit will do. So therefore, this are the fountain gate streams of living water. And remember, it's after the dung gate. So you cannot have people with all the dung and all the thing being filled at the fountain gate. No way. That is why the the, 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 the dung gate came before the fountain gate. God is teaching us something there. We got to let out all that dung. So we had people presenting themselves, committing adultery, doing all kind of thing, and then telling them they're filling and they're doing this and they're doing that. Right in front of any blind eyes, Peter had to deal with the fortune teller. And right to, 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 the, to the time, Paul had to deal with the fortune teller, pardon me. And then right to, we see, during the centuries, man, the devil has tried to confuse. You know why? Because we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the guide and everything. So let's teach. Let's go tonight. And I had to say that. I had to say that because it's so important that you receive the word of God and know that the Holy Spirit is a must. So a lot of people over the years have been frightened to be filled because of all the confusion the devil put around the Holy Spirit. But I find the word of God is very clear, straight, and you walk with him. He tells you what to do. And that is why I love choosing language, this story. And, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see that story. I, it's when I wrote this story, I, I, so I wasn't taught this during our time of growing up. And, I, and God has raised me up to just bring this story to the church. And we go to the left. I want you to remember first that the Holy Spirit of God is a person. That the next thing is a person. He has a mind. He searches the human mind. He has a will. He forbids. He for permits. And he speaks. Let me get that done. So you want to go to, um, and at the go to, we want to go to, to the scriptures, Romans 8, 27, 1 Corinthians 2, 10. 1 Corinthians 2, 11, Acts 16, 6 to 7, Acts 16, 10. And as you go in the references of my book, it has references all there. But I want to flow tonight as I talk to you about the Holy Spirit. So he spoke to Philip in the desert. He spoke to Peter on the housetop. He spoke to some elders in Antioch. He speaks <laughs> and, the, and to the seven churches in Asia Minor in Revelation chapter 1 and 2. And no less than seven occasions, the Holy Spirit, he speaks. He loves. He grieves. He prays and offers up fervent and effectual prayers for you. Romans 8, 26. He prays and offers fervent prayers for you. He is omnipresent. You cannot hide from him. He is omniscient. <laughs> omniscient. Hallelujah. And, and, and it's very important that we we, we understand he's the omniscient God. He searches all things, even the more profound things of God. You need him. He's omnipotent. You need his wisdom and guidance. 
So when you understand who this Holy Spirit is, this omnipotent, omnipresent, he searches all things. Come on here now. And how do you know him? No years according to the scriptures. Oh, come on. Don't let nobody, no man, tell you something else. It don't make sense. Man is not man is a human being. You're created by God. Man is not God. So when men pretend themselves to be God, to figure they reckon the Holy Spirit and tell the Holy Spirit what to do. Come on. Remember, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Read that in Second Corinthians. And as a Christian, you are the temple of the living God. You are the Christian, you're the temple of the living God. And Second Corinthians 6.16 and first Second Corinthians 6.16 and First Corinthians 3.16. Now so it's very important as we share this case that you, you you get the, my book on Jerusalem Gates and it has I, I really put them compactly for the believer so you can put it in your purse and, and read and study and analyze. Don't let nobody fool you. The Holy Spirit, I talk all about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, He's called the Spirit of God, He's called the Spirit of Christ. He's called the spirit of truth. He's called the spirit of grace. He's called the spirit of glory. He's called the spirit of life. He's called the spirit of wisdom of, and revelation. He's called the, the spirit of promise. He's called the spirit of adoption. He's called the Holy Spirit of holiness and of faith. And he is the comforter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, without him, you can do nothing. Give God some praise. And as I and as I run down those, those scriptures from from theater, from Romans, John, Hebrews, Peter, I trust that you will get that's who the Holy Spirit is. Hallelujah. In John 16, 13 to 15, it says, Jesus answered, Jesus assured us that when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his authority, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, not himself. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare to it to you. All things that the Father has at mine. Therefore, I said that he would take of mine and declare it unto you. What you want better than that? That's Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit. And anytime you study how the Holy Spirit is, Jesus will, he's a spirit of truth. You don't lie. And you cannot be a liar talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Bye bye. That's not so. He has come to guide you into truth. All truth. John 6, 13. So as we pass through the valley gate and we go around the world because we now have to, the, 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 the world is, we are the steeple, we have to go into the fountain. We have to get into it, we have to go into the fountain. We have to go in the fountain. And at that point in time, we have to go to the fountain gate to allow the Holy Spirit to empower us for living. Empowering for living is through the Holy Gate. Because of that, we get it tested, we pour it. God is appearing as a real life living, this Christian life. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. It's not by might, it's not by power. But my, my spirit said the Lord. And I want to give you that reference here tonight, Zechariah 4 6. Not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit said the Lord. Jesus declared, But you shall receive, he told us, he told, he told her, power, he said, but 
after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So after the Holy Spirit comes and fills you, you shall receive power. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. During this period, COVID period of ministry, God brought that clarity clear the scripture. When the, you can only be this after you receive power of the Holy Spirit. And let me, I want you to fasten your seatbelts now. Before people used to say they can't go down the road, there are no transport, then there are no money. They can't go downstairs. Yeah, they pay plenty of money to go. That's what they put to, all the cover ups that they were putting people mind. But now, in our generation, over this generation, because to be truthful, internet only have been here for 10, about 10, um, we're in 2023. So we are talking about, about 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 22 years, 20, and basically about 20, 20 years, 15 to 20 years now. We have the internet, and then we have the cell phone, and we have all the things that over the five years that come, and all we have to do is, we have the Bible on it, they have all kind of, it's to send a message, tap it, and to witness that tap and send a message, and we can't do that. Many Christians can't, you know why? Because all that excuse but distance that there is the Holy Spirit who had to empower you and give you the anointing just to send the word. That's what Jesus is saying. And that is why people are crippled, crippled in the church, crippled in activity. And the case of witness, witnessing now, and no big setter, witnessing now, you have to get no big set. You have the scripture, you have to send it, and you have a whole list of people to spend hours with people. But you cannot send a text and tell them what you want. You have the Bible at your access. You have all kind of men, men of God have written all kind of things. A pastor, you could send the message you would. You could send the message you would. But do you know why you can't text it up? It's the anointing. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because God says, you have to ask for God's will. That is the will. All churches, all evangelical churches, all believing churches could set up stations and go global. You know why they can't do it? Is the anointing of the Holy Spirit to get the vision? Come on, man. Now. Hallelujah. And God has to open your eyes and anoint you to fill it for the long haul. This is marathon, you know. This is living. I could remember the when the COVID coronavirus hit us. And in March in 2020, my daughter Peggy Ann came and said, What shall we do? And the Lord has spoken to me and before and we were setting up we were setting up the online ministry in mission because we recognize with the necessary technology we can commit we have to commit use technology and we have advocate that for years as a fundamental aspect of the ministry we have to be able to operate with technology and without technology as a mission and establish the base we had bought the stuff and we're getting ready to go and same time in 2020, 15 of March, 15 of March, the world stopped. Coronavirus stopped, and we all shut in. 20 March, 20 March, 2020, and God opened the whole opportunity online. You got StreamYard coming on. You had Zoom, then you had StreamYard, and you had everything. Open opportunity to the whole world to get a message. And I realized then that it, God had prepared us so much. You had to have a computer and a calm. You never had a calm and some lights. You could do the work. And God told me particularly clearly, my son, this is it. You go minister. You start at eight o'clock p.m and nine o'clock i didn't just put up them time you know and i will show the world uh god speaks to you say eight o'clock and every time i'll every time at eight o'clock you will be there online i'll give you the life the power everything and god is faithful 
And there are so many growth, hundreds of opportunities, thousands of opportunities to spread the gospel. The Holy Spirit brings revelation. He's omnipresent. And yet still, yet still, people buying fancy phones to talk that they're coming for and can't tap, can't send a word. No empowerment. Let me tell you something, pastors. God has to individual with Holy Spirit. Hmm. And God told us, don't miss that opportunity. And I'm telling you, my dear friends, tonight, that the Holy Spirit speaks to me, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. And oh, what God has done. And it's the, this Christian life is a walking by faith. The problem with everybody you want to see. Yeah, Eve wanted to see. Eve wanted to see and play God. But God said, The just shall live by feet. We walk by feet. So let's just take over what, what the Holy Spirit does and what He did to the team, what He's doing to us as we minister to Him. Catherine and all should. So we must go to the fountain gate. I want all of us to study at the fountain gate and allow the Holy Spirit to empower us for living. We must be empowered by the Holy Spirit. No Holy Spirit empowerment, you won't be able to mm, tap it when the Holy Spirit empower you. That's why you fear, you fear, you know? Everybody see me going to the worker. You fear, you fear to tap it. You fear to take a thing and pull it. You fear to create a little tick, whatever thing, and minister the Chinese and all those on TikTok. Fear. And to overcome that, you have to have a, the God has to, you have to visit the dung gate, cleanse all the thing, and you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You've got to go to the fountain gate. It's not by might. It's not by power, but by the Holy Spirit and the Lord. And Jesus said, in order to witness, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come unto you, and then you will be able to be witnesses. In Jerusalem, in Judah, then you will be able to send the text, then you will be able to do that, then you'll make any creativity. Those who are staying home and those who are going home and those who be doing different parts of is the Holy Spirit that to empower you. The issue is the empowerment or that activity. Is this spinning top in what you know? Activity. That is what the church of God has to rise up and do. As a matter of fact, let us look at the summary of the works of the Holy Spirit. And I have listed them and I have put them in on page 47 of my book, Jerusalem Gates. You can just pull it down. Um, can we have a Kengu version for now and let's listen to it? So you could read it. Good have. He regenerates the ministry of the Holy Gate. This is the summary of the Holy Spirit. He regenerates the believer, believing sinner. He creates him and gives him the nature of God. It, 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 that we're talking about initial sacrifice. He who gives that creates the believer. He regenerates, he recreates him and gives us the inner nature of God. He baptizes us. And when you go to the fountain, if you ever go to the fountain, you ever go to the fountain, get any fountain flowing through you, visit Jamaica by Down River Falls. And you go on the falls and see the fountain coming and it flushes the warm water and you want to stay for the whole day. Amen. When you're under that fountain gate, you want to stay all the time. He baptizes us. He indwells the believer, so he's inside. He seals the believer. So the Holy Spirit is given that sealing. We know that we have been working. He seals the believer. He fills the believer. We believe he fills us. We are filled. Paul said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He blesses the believer by praying for them, you know, by guiding them, by Teaching them, by empowering them to witness for witness, by imparting the love of God in them through and in and through them to us. That is what the Holy Spirit did. He does all of that for us. He can he conform us to the image of Christ. He strengthens our new nature. He reveals biblical truths to us. He leads us to all truths. He recalls and clarifies the works of Jesus Christ to us and helping us to understand the scriptures that all that Holy Spirit does. He assures us 
concerning salvation and services. He gives us liberty. He fulfill or he fill, he fill our mouths with the words to speak, eternal will speak. He intercedes for us so that the Lord, the Lord will be done and bestow extraordinary gifts upon us within the body of Christ. Extraordinary gifts, gifts of the spirit. And, and, and therefore, you know, we, we, you know, we, we have special things that we are able to do extraordinary things. Is the Holy Spirit all that he does for us? Come on here now. Paul declared, this I say unto you, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to you. So you cannot do the things that you would. Paul continued, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Come on here now. When people are filled, when they're from the gate and the Holy Spirit, love. First Corinthians 13, love. No, we're not talking about erotic nonsense. We're talking about love of God. First Corinthians 13, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness temperance against such there's no law so when you are filled with the holy spirit you demonstrate the fruit of the holy spirit man that is what comes that is what you see you see that whole you see the the fruit evident that is what the word for galatians 5 22 to 24 teaches us moreover they that are christ have crucified the flesh with affections of the lust so we, when you're in christ you have crucified the flesh with the affection of the lust so you don't practice it and live in sin and then tell me you fill with the Holy Spirit. That is cultic, that is a that is madness, that is cults and isn't false doctrine. That telling people all over the place, a lot of people fall for that nonsense from the devil. If we live in the spirit, we shall also walk in the Holy Spirit. And he's the Holy Spirit of God. The word of God tell commands us not to be drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the holy spirit speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody to the lord to the singing to to, to, to you know in your hearts to the lord then they come a generation and say don't sing the hymns they, but they don't want money but the, but the word don't sing no psalms. They, they make up their own thing from they take something from the world system and make up the whole thing oh man god says love not the world if you love the world, your enemy is God, and the same people you watch him, the musician, take up all them things, and he's singing it, and you go into the world. We spin he fill his with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Come on here now. We give thanks for all things. And the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, If I go not away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He here Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit who will send, who will send unto us to be your counselor, your helper, or your advocate, your intercessor, your strength, and your com and your comforter. He's all in all. The Holy Spirit is all that to us. Let me go back a little backtrack a bit. It is the Holy Spirit. Right? Who gives us the desire to pray? Remember, go back a little more. The moment we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in and takes residence in our hearts. The Holy Spirit, we talk about initial sanctification. He comes in to make us holy and to help us, help us to live life of practical holiness in a sinful world. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us the desire to pray, the desire to know God, the hunger for holiness, a desire to be holy and the enabling power to overcome sin. If we are fill, if we are to fill God's mandate of holiness, we must allow the Holy Spirit to fill us to the 
overflowing. That's what we're talking about, the fountain gate. Mm. Paul gave a practical code of conduct on how to live. It impacts our lives and how to live. He instructs us to put off. Went to the fountain gate, put off, went to the gate, put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the seedful lust, and receive and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And we have to put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Daily, moment by moment, we must pray, we must obey the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us and to you and yield to him when he guides us. Nobody can do that for you. We have to do that for yourself. You have to yield. You have to obey. That's what we have to do. Finally, we... We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit with all prayer and petition. Pray always, in every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit. And with this in view, stay alert to the perseverance and petition for all God's people. And I'm talking here about Romans 6. 18. In Proverbs 3, 500, the writer to the Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. My friends tonight, as we visit the fountain gate and we are overflowing with the fountain gate reminds us that the Holy Spirit is crucial to in our lives. Crucial, crucial, crucial in our lives. You know, on the men's men talk, we're talking about the promptings of the Holy Spirit. You see prompts us men in our leadership, the things we're doing. Holy Spirit. The anointing or filling with the Holy Spirit provides us with powerful, powerful and authoritative speech. First Corinthians 2 4. The Holy Spirit powers and enables the Christian A to be witnesses of Jesus. Acts 1 8. We can't fulfill work for nature, we can't be part of mission order unless we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. He enables us to do good and heal. Acts 10, 38. To abound in hope. Romans 15, 13. To speak and preach. 1 Corinthians 2, 45. To endure difficulties. 2 Corinthians 6, 6 to 10. To rejoice in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. To stand against the enemy in prayer. Ephesians 6, 10. All that is, can only be accomplished through the Holy Spirit. He enables us to be patient. Colossians 1, 11. He enables us to be strengthened to know God's love. Ephesians 1, 16. And to share in Christ's suffering. Is the Holy Spirit that we said in Him we live and move and have our being. You cannot identify as a Christian or say a Christian without the Holy Spirit in you. That's the first mark. And then you consecrate yourself and allow Him to work through us. It's on the inside. What on the inside comes on from the outside. Never forget, my dear friends, tonight, that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He is the spirit of comfort, truth, wisdom, understanding and intelligence, counsel and advice, might and authority, 
knowledge and facts and the reverence of the Lord. Talking about reverence. This generation had this last, this decade last, had to understand God is reverence. Visit revelations. We cry holy, holy. The whole concept of God and the whole presence of God is reverence. Where do you reverence God? When you know there's no reverence, you know there's no Holy Spirit. <laughs> you have to know the word and let the word set you free to know what people are doing. Reverence. We had to come reverence before God. Hmm. His goal is to bear fruit of Christ. True, namely, win souls, make disciples of men. John 4, 35 and 36. And God wants us to be more like him. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit we shared with you before. So I packed together all these verses. You can take each one a month, a day, and go through it and analyze who the Holy Spirit is and what he does for us. And I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit you will, who have consecrated will fill your life. It is not by might. It is not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, friends, no physical strength, no physical desire could have caused us to minister right through the Spirit. No way. He's a Holy Spirit who empowers to preach. I know no Abba Kabba Abba who give the sermons, who give the ministry, who give us strength to prepare the word. It's the Holy Spirit. Come on here now. During this period of ministry, my life has transformed. The Holy Spirit just give me, open my eyes to so many different things. And tell me to be more alert, to be more careful. The Holy Spirit has put that, you know, one of the things he told me, what your access. Don't change who you give access to. You have, and, and just be and walk with him because the end times and the devil come like a roller seeking whom you devour. In writing this book, I give a, at the end of each chapter, I give a hymn that God has laid on my heart for the readers. At the end of this chapter, the prayer was in this song, hymn. I give a hymn at the end of each chapter for us to read hymns. Listen to the lyrics of the hymn, it says, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. And as I repeat the stanzas of the songs, I pray that this will be your prayer tonight for you, your family, and empower you. And I want to pray to you. I want to pray to you. And I'm praying for one thing in particular, Lord. I'm praying for your fingers and your hands to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. You'll anoint them to use them for his own and his glory. Anoint them so that you can use the instrument, not simply the cell phone, every instrument in the home for his glory to witness to send hundreds, thousands. If the Caribbean church of believers and all the believers send emails and thousands of God, hallelujah, we shake the world. Daily we shake the world. The world will change. But there's a force. The devil is preventing us, each of us. You know we must tell them to touch that, to touch that cell phone and send out a message. What the people in technology say? Bill Gates say, this opportunity will soon pass. It will be a different issue. Your Facebook and all things will be late technology and they go to artificial intelligence and new ways with more controls. So those who miss it would have missed the opportunity for God 
to witness spending time on vain philosophies and babblings and old talk. But we, God has given us the man. We must focus on the mandate. We must focus on the mandate. We must focus, allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, to take control, consecrate, go to the dung gate, cleanse yourself and say, Lord, fill me now. Hear my song, my hymn I leave with you tonight. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wean it from earth to all its pulses move. Stoop to my weakness, mighty as thou art, and make me love thee as I ought to love. Hast thou not bid me love thee, God and King? All and all thine own, soul, heart, and strength and mind. I see thy cross, that teach my heart to cling. Oh, let me seek thee. And oh, let me find. The third standard goes on to say, Teach me to feel that thou art always near. Teach me to struggle, the struggle of the soul to bear, to check the rising doubt, the rebel sigh. Teach me the patience of an answered prayer. Teach me to love. Thee as thine angels love. O holy passion, fill in all my frame. The kingling of the heavenly descended of my heart and altar. And I love the flame. I pray tonight that God will bless you. The song. Holy song is now a hymn. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. On me, make me, mold me, fill me, control me, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. I want to preach you tonight. I want you to hold your hands. And those hands, those hands, those hands. I want to pray that God will use your hands, the Lord, Holy Spirit, fill me. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill my mind, take control of my mind so I can minister, I can speak, I can speak boldly of you. Take control of my fingers so I can even use my the instruments that you give me to send the message to the mind and the word and send it to all on my cell phone, all on the phone, all to witness. Oh Lord, just give me, oh Lord, just me. If each of us pray that God will give you some time, some time each day just to witness and send the word to all, as many, many possible in the world. And if we all do that, each day we can minister to millions of people throughout the world. I pray tonight that you will get the vision. I pray, oh Holy Spirit, that you will teach us, you will teach us. I pray, oh Holy Spirit, that every single person in the Wesleyan fold, the Wesleyan pilgrim who is full, or Wesleyan church, oh God, I pray all the people and global partners throughout the world and all the different missionary groups, all the Christian and believers, that we will share that gospel. And you, the old days, so that you have time, we will take that opportunity now while we have time, while we are available, and minister to the world and win souls for you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, just move and fill and touch lives tonight. Yes, Lord. Just overflow. Yes. 
Just go to the fountain saints and allow the Holy Spirit to just fill you, to take control of you. Take control of you. And you wish to sing the same sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. Just sing that wonderful God, sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit, just to and fill the homes and the minds of all our listeners tonight. Just sweet Holy Spirit, just minister. Minister, comfort and heal and strengthen and just take control of and then empower and oh, get boldness and strength. Oh, Holy Ghost, pray. Oh, Holy Spirit, minister. Oh, Holy Spirit, cleanse. And oh, Holy Spirit, do your work, do your work, do your work. Hallelujah. Empower tonight, fill tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, search the heart, search the hearts. Oh, stir up the gifts within your people. Stir up the gifts. Stir up the gifts in our church. Stir up the gifts of the saints in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for tonight. And I thank you for this devotion. And I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to minister to your people in the kingdom. You are here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. I ask you, ask the Lord to come into your heart. The Lord Jesus come into my heart. I forgive me for all my sins and cleanse me and save me. When you ask, when you confess your sin, I say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins. Forgive me. God, Holy Spirit, God will forgive you and His Holy Spirit. You get that initial Holy Spirit coming to you and start to do that work of regeneration. And then after you move on, to take all of me, I so say I consecrate my life. I dedicated my life to you, and the whole God is going to do it in your life, my dear friend, tonight. So, I love you. The love of the Lord. Share the fountain gate. Share the fountain gate. Spend some time tonight at the fountain gate. Go through the scriptures, John fourteen, John fifteen. Go through the scriptures and the fountain gate. I've shared with you. The chapter in my book on the Holy Spirit on the fountain gate is chapter seven in Jerusalem gates. Go to the fountain gates. This is the real deal in the Christian work. It is the, from the whole cleansing and the Holy Spirit that we can accelerate to win the prize. Hallelujah. I pray that God will bless you real good. And may God keep you and may God strengthen you. This Tuesday, next week, God's will on Monday, we visit the gates. And I pray that God will bless you. Tomorrow night, men talk. We're talking Holy Spirit again. How to recognize discernment. God is going to bless you. Come out with men in bed, amen. Get your tea. Get some soup, corn soup. Sit around the television with your family. Sit around with your friends. Listen to the word of God. You'll never be the same again. God bless you tonight. Good night. Love you, the love of the Lord. Amen. Left, right, left, say we're moving on together. Take we instructions from the Savior. Yeah, we taking the gospel on the world. The world. The world. We left, right, left, we moving left, right, wrong. The world, left, right, left, we marching left, right, taking it wrong. The world, taking the gospel on and around and around the world.